What are the three basic money skills everybody needs to know? Yeah, so, so the most important thing is uh, the time value of money. So if, if, if you, and, and I'm gonna show you how, how, this, uh, how this works using Microsoft Excel. Okay, so right now it's 2020. 2021 is next year, 2022. I won't type all those years, I promise. But if we go here, um, and then we drag over here, okay, to 2000 and, let's go way over here, whatever, 2041, okay. So let's say um, I'll put here money you have, and then over here I'll write interest rates. Now, interest rates are artificially low today. Usually they're much higher, okay? So let's say you have um, $100 right now, okay? And let's say the interest rate is 9%. 0.09. That's how you write it. 0.09. Okay, good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how how important the time value of money is, and then I'm going to show you the inverse of time value of money. So I'm going to show you future value now, and then I'm going to show you present value, and this will make much more sense in a second. Okay, so right now, let's say you have $100, and let's say it's 9% interest. So it's, it's actually $100 today. There you go. Uh, I'll take this times in brackets one plus the interest rate okay now we're gonna do the same thing and i'm gonna show you compound interest so now we're gonna do is i'm gonna go this times one plus whoops one plus the interest rate double click see it's there great and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drag that all the way over and you're gonna love the time value of money approach and you're gonna probably spend less money on coffee and everything going forward after this exercise all right now let's drag this all the way over all the way over here good okay so all we're doing is we're multiplying and i'll make this bigger the previous year times one plus the interest rate okay so let me make this bigger here's the interest rate nine percent okay money you have um and then uh 2021 that's just nine percent uh, times 100 bucks. This here is 9% times 109 bucks. This here is 9% uh, times 119 bucks. Yada, yada, yada. All the way over here. Look at that. Okay. So now you have $611, okay, in, in 2041. So that's the time value of money. That's the most important principle uh, in, in business, okay, when it comes to finance, I should say. So 100 bucks today at 9% interest per year is going to be worth six times as much. Uh, by 2041. That's a big deal, dude. That's a big deal. And if the interest rate was higher and you can play around with this as well, you can make it, I don't know, 20%. Obviously, it's going to be much, much higher. Look at that. $4,600. You put 100 bucks in the bank today at an annual return of 20%, which is tough to get, I get. You'll have $4,600 in the future. Amazing, hey? Now, that's the future value money. The present value money is the opposite of that. If you have $4,641 in the year 2041 and you want to know what that is in today's terms, meaning in 2020 uh, at a 9% interest rate, then it's 100 bucks. That's just the opposite. And people that have problems understanding the present value of money just think of the future value of money reversed. Okay, so that's the most important concept that you can learn when it, when it comes to it to finance. The next one is uh, when it comes to money skills is um, it, it, just thinking longer term. Always be long-term focused. And I know it goes hand in hand with the future value of money concept I just showed you, but it's a more qualitative uh, metric I wanna talk about in general as well, which is you gotta ask yourself before you invest in any stock or any company, um, you know, in five years, is this company going to be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? And then of course you do all your due diligence and your research, which I teach uh, in a lot of detail in, in my finance courses, but just be long-term focused. And Warren Buffett said that the longer the view, the wiser the intention. Um, and he's the epitome for thinking long-term. He's brilliant and he's successful because of that. And Warren Buffett never invests in a stock, or actually when Warren Buffett invests in a stock, he assumes the stock market might be closed for 10 years after he buys a stock. Obviously it won't be closer to 10 years, but he doesn't care. That's just how long-term focused he is. Okay, and, and now you ask for, for a third one. I, I would say that the third basic money skill in general is to understand accounting and finance uh, and not memorize it. Because if you memorize it, you, you'll, you'll never really be good at it. You'll never really be able to make a lot of money and you'll never really be able to manage your own personal finances. I want you to understand how things work in finance. For example, uh, a balance sheet is called a balance sheet because it's a scale. And on one side you have um, things you own and on the other side you have um, the people that own your stuff, meaning loans. 
uh, and the percent of it you own as well. So for example, with a car, my first car was a Toyota Camry. Love that car, um, never broke down. But on the asset side is that car, which I have, let's say it's 10 grand. Okay, so the balance sheet, which, which tells you what you own and what you owe, is way out of whack. Okay, so that's 10 grand for the car. Well, who owns that? Well, I own half of it. I own 5,000 of it. Okay, we're still a little bit out of balance. Well, who owns the other 5,000? Oh, the bank of Toyota. I, I have a, a loan with them, hypothetically speaking. So now it balances out. The $10,000 car I have, the asset, is equal to $5,000 liability uh, from Toyota, plus $5,000 in equity, which means ownership, that's what equity means, in my ownership, okay, in, in Toyota. So assets equals liabilities plus equity. So I would say that's really important. So the bottom line, three things to remember for finance. Uh, number one, the future value of money. Number two, think longer term, qualitative as well, okay, whenever you invest in a company. And uh, number three, I want you to enjoy reading financial statements like a good book. That's nerdy, I know, but I want you to understand how financial statements and finance works in general and accounting in general and not memorize it. Otherwise, if you memorize it, you'll get a D in accounting like I did uh, when I took accounting for the first time at McGill University. I thought my life was over, but I didn't understand that in, in, like in high school, you can memorize stuff and do well, but in university, you have to understand stuff in order to do well. And that's why I got a D in accounting first, and then I took it again. I got a little bit better. Yeah. So you're, you're probably asking, Chris, why the heck are you teaching this stuff? Because um, I failed at it. I failed at it. And, and I think I understand how to teach it because I learned it the wrong way growing up. So always understand and enjoy reading financial statements like a good book. Look for patterns. It's fun looking for patterns. It's fun charting stuff in Excel, the income statement in Excel, for example, and, 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 and looking at trends. A trend is your friend. Enjoy it.